First of all, you don't know me. <laughs> We're all about that high school drama girl, drama girl, all about them high school queens. We'll take you for a ride in our comic girl, drama girl. cheering for the right team. Drama queens, drama queens, drama queens. smart girl, rough girl, fashion with your tough girl, you could sit with us, girl. Drama queens, drama queens, drama queens, drama, drama queens, drama queens. Well, hello, Drama Queens fans. We are thrilled to be here with you today for our first ever bonus listener Q&A episode. It's bonus time. You guys earned it. <laughs> you earned it. Tell you've them asked what they've for won, it. Sophia. What you've won, our dear and devoted fans who we adore, <laughs> is a quick Q&A with us. Uh, you guys submit so many amazing questions. And, you know, we normally do like two listener questions at the end of every episode. But we're celebrating the end of another year. We've made it to the end of 2021. <laughs> and barely. we just really, barely, but we're hanging on and we're hanging on together. <laughs> and we want to do it with all of you. So we thought we would do a devoted episode that is just a Q&A with some of the great questions you guys have submitted. So let's dive in. It's kind of like being at a convention. Yeah, it's like <gasps> it the is. Q&As we do at a convention. Oh, oh yeah. it's like a panel. Aww. It's our cyber panel. Um, I like it. Joy, what's our first question? Babe? Okay, our first question mm -hmm. is from Salyar B123. Hello, darling. Hello. Uh, the first <laughs> Hello. question, the question is that you've asked is what mm. is your favorite character trait of your character? And do you mm. share a trait with your character? Ooh. That's always such a tough question. It is. Because no, so much like of like, little, how can you play a character yeah. without some of yourself coming through? That's just, you know, that's just yeah. you. Well, the thing that's uh, that are easiest to play are the things that are closest to you. Yes, it's and it's easier to congratulate a totally separate entity and be like, "I really like that my character does this." <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's kind of self congratulatory, um, but so you know, funny. without being a jerk about it. You know, look, my favorite character of Haley is uh, her character trait is that she is um, she's got an iron spine. I love that mm. about her. You know, it's also a character trait that I am that I uh, uh, desire to emulate in my life, even though it has gotten me into trouble at times. Because when <laughs> you get really mm -hmm. um, staunch about things that you believe or that you think are right or whatever, you know, it it can, you can kind of hunker down on it. It makes it hard to be flexible. But the flip side of that is you don't. Um, succumb to peer pressure a lot. It's a, there's a lot of confidence involved in being able to stand your ground with something. So, mm. you know, it's a double-sided, a, a double-sided coin or double-edged sword. I don't, I don't know, but there's, there's good and bad <laughs> to both sides. That but sounded good. Nevertheless, it is still a character trait that I think ultimately, ultimately, um, when combined with love, uh, ends up being one of, uh, one that I, I would like to keep in my life anyway. It ends up being more good I've than bad. I've always mm -hmm. respected that about you, Joy. You never cave to peer pressure. You just mm -hmm. absolutely know what you want and you're true to it. And but yes, 100%. Yeah, thank you. That's awesome. Yeah, Thanks. That's so true. What about you guys? Yeah, Soph, what do you love about Brooke? Um, I'm still thinking. I'm ruminating. Okay. I, I love that Brooke Davis is very bold and unapologetic. Mm -hmm. I always feel like I'm in trouble or I'm bugging somebody or like, <laughs> I, I just feel like I'm in the way all the time. And I think that maybe just like comes from anxiety or whatever. And I love that she is just like, no, nah, I'm here. I deserve to be here. Everything's great. And I'm awesome. That, yeah. that is something I would <laughs> love to emulate. I think the, the thing that we are very similar about is that we go zero to a hundred real quick in defense of the people we love. Yes. Mm -hmm. and yes, that, you do. <laughs> yep. Yep. Me being that person. <laughs> Hell yeah. Oh my God. If anybody fucks with either of you, it's like, it's war. I'm coming with a flamethrower. Like, God, I love it. No ifs, ands, or buts. And some people may not like that, but that's something <laughs> I appreciate. Like I, I love hard. I love my people. And whether it's like my humans or, or us as a human community, I think that standing up for people with a with a like ferocious love, not being willing to turn the other cheek to injustice or abuse or mistreatment, that's something I am I am I I like about myself. And I like that um I like that Brooke has that on like perhaps a, a level eleven out of ten. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'd want to be with you in a fight. 
Like if yeah. we're picking teams, yeah. Joy and I are on your team. Yeah, hundred sure. percent. Sign me up. I'll be like, get behind me. Let's go. Get behind me. I'll take the first punch. Weird enough. I actually posted something on my Instagram stories today that I copied from somebody else that I think really applies to Peyton. Um, mm. And it's from Scott Barry Kaufman, who is a cognitive scientist and humanistic mm. psychologist. And it says, tragic optimism is the search for meaning during mm. the inevitable tragedies of human existence and is mm. better for us than avoiding darkness and trying to stay positive. And wow. I wow. think... I, I know right now, I mean, we've talked about the losses that I've experienced in real life this year or, you know, like in years past, mm-hmm. I get really down about them. Um, but tragic optimism is something that perhaps I got to learn from Peyton, mm-hmm. who continues to leave a door open, like literally yes. in her home. <laughs> that door is always open. Um, and perhaps that's a metaphor for her continued optimism that even when stuff is just fucking miserable there's a chance mm-hmm. that it could yeah. get better. Yeah. I love that. It's so like true about Peyton. That, chance. that is so true. She does. There's always like a thread of hope somewhere that, that mm-hmm. she really holds on to. And it's, it's like a little light inside of her all the time. It's awesome. <laughs> it's real sad when it goes bad. Guys. <laughs> it's so sad. Okay. Well, thank you for that question. Um, I love that. Let's see. We've talked about some of these that I'm, I'm, as I'm scrolling through, I'm like, okay, well, we've talked about what the audition process was like. That was in one of our earlier Drama Queens episodes mm-hmm. and the characters we ended up playing and who we auditioned for and, and all that. Um, a line in the show that you'll never forget. I'm, I, I can't, that was, uh, I can't get around Dan with his heart attack going, you better hope I die. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Oh, you better hope I die. You better That's hope I die so is good. hilarious. And yeah, maybe maybe some of those questions we've answered we'll come back to at yeah. some point if we do another one of these if you guys like it. But so if is there a line that you remember? Oof. Um or that you is yeah. there a line from the show that you say in real life? I don't know if there's a line I a specific line I say in real life, but I think the that moment in, I think it might have been season four, um, where we did the storyline where we all had to take the pictures that represented us, and like oh. Brooke really got vulnerable about feeling like yeah. she was not enough. That that yeah, has that stuck good. with me. That was a good one because that that was one of the things that was put on the show, you know, based on a conversation I had about my real life. Oh, baby! And it felt very naked and scary in the way that you talk about you know, it feeling very naked and scary in the confessional, um, in season two, episode five. And, uh, to see the response of that and how much it it meant to fans then and how much it continues to mean to fans now, it really cemented the, the kind of holy invitation of real vulnerability for me. And I, I know that isn't exactly a line but the line that goes along with it is, you know, Brooke's quote about people are going to label you and it's, you know, it's how you overcome those labels and it goes on and on. I just love that. I, I yeah. love, I loved that so much. And that has really stuck with me. Oh, that's awesome. Do you guys have like a, a, a specific line <laughs> I mean, other than you better well, hope I die? You better Something hope for I your die. characters. <laughs> oh God, I don't, I, I can't, that. I can't think of anything right now. Mm. My love language is when people do things for you, like, um, without you asking, you know, when they like yeah. anticipate your needs mm-hmm. or they just like handle something that you're too overwhelmed to handle. Yeah. And so yeah. I like this mantra in the back of my head for years has been that line that Peyton says at Lucas and Lindsay's wedding in like the, the dream where she says, yeah. when you fixed my car, you fixed my heart. And mm. it's like, you did a thing that I don't know how to do. And you took care of like a really high stress situation for me. And it was an act of service. That's my love language. Mm-hmm. And so there will be times when like someone does something really nice for me. And I'm like, when you fix my car, you fix my heart. Yeah. Like, <laughs> that's also oh, one of I my love, love languages. It's awesome. <laughs> it makes such a yeah. difference. So, hey, somebody's asking us, do we think Karen looks more like Nathan's mother and Deb looks more like Lucas? I totally thought that. 
for years. Absolutely. But didn't, for years. wasn't Chad originally cast as Nathan? Or didn't he supposed to, he was supposed to be Nathan and then he decided he wanted to be Lucas or something like that? Yeah. I think there was a casting snafu. There, there was. What's the story behind that, Soph? Yeah, because they wanted Chad to play Nathan. They wanted him to play the bad guy. Mm-hmm. But Chad had played a bad guy on Dawson's Creek. So yes. he didn't want to play another bad guy. He wanted the chance to play, you know, this sensitive writer yeah. guy. And and so the studio was like, well, shit, who do we get to play Nathan? And then they <laughs> had to go out on this. Kelly. We can't get rid of her. Yeah. Like, what are we going to do? Um, so they went out on this search. And so, yeah, we always joked, uh, you know, privately as a cast that it's like Nathan and Lucas are switched at birth. <laughs> it's like <laughs> the real storyline. We should do that sometime. Like, you know, so we should just funny. do a table read and have the boys swap. <gasps> oh, that would be fun. Oh, I would love that. I think yeah. that'd be fun. That would be fun. I would love that so much. Okay, Megan Nicole wants to know, what do we miss from the early 2000s? Not low-rise jeans, I'll tell you right now. That's what we don't miss. Oh, my gosh. Do not bring those back. I see them coming, and I don't like it. I don't want any part of those. In fact, the only part I want is the top part. (laughs) The missing part. The missing part. (laughs) (laughs) Wait, but what do you guys actually miss from that era? I miss life without a cell phone in your pocket everywhere you go. Yeah. I was going to say the same. I miss life with no social media. Yeah, I do too. I really, really do. I miss the bands, guys. I miss the bands so much. There was a year Mm. where like I saw, I saw the White Stripes at one of their first shows in New York City. I saw the Strokes. I saw like the the Beastie Boys. I saw like Weezer, like every Mm. good band. Like there was so much. Outkast put out a great album. Oh, yeah. There was such good music and it wasn't yep. electronic. It, it was just really like, like basement band rock and roll. Yeah. And, yeah. and the hip hop was really good. I just, yeah, I, I'm going through a thing. Does every old person go through that phase where they're like, I miss, <laughs> I miss the good old days. I miss the music of my era. Yeah. I make my kids listen to all that stuff on like satellite radio i found a playlist on apple that's just like the killers and white stripes i love that yeah love it super hit i remember when the first kings of leon album came out (gasps) and i was like my life has changed forever makes me (sighs) i saw them open for ben queller like they were Mm. opening for someone else and i was like who are these handsome little boys with those voices and those Mm -hmm. beats god they're just so incredible Mm. Yeah. Maybe Love we that. need to go to one of these one of these reunion festivals. Yeah. Yeah, we do. I think we do. Oh, wait, guys. This has nothing to do with music, but it does feel romantic. And <laughs> obviously we're all romanced by the by the music of the early aughts. Yeah. Savmets asks, what is your favorite spot for a first date? Mm. Where do you like to go on a first date? I like to go for a drive or a uh oh. Or Joy, yeah. tell me more. <laughs> <laughs> well, I have I have one first date rule. No makeup. Really? No makeup Ooh. on the first date. Because if you don't like what you got, yeah. you don't you don't get to get me all cleaned up. I don't I don't show up a mess, but I don't I mean, I just don't put makeup on for the first date because it's like you gotta you gotta take what you see is what you get. I, I love, love that. that. Yeah. <laughs> Jinx. <laughs> yeah, but but by the way, why didn't you tell us that before? We could have saved ourselves so much trouble. <laughs> I'm, t- I'm yeah. telling you all now. Yeah, um, that's genius. And uh, and the other, oh, and guys love it, by the way, too, because they're so like, oh my God, you don't care. You don't like, you're not fussy. <laughs> you know, it's like kind of, I think it helps them let their guard down a little bit too. So they feel like they can relax. And also mm. that's why I like not going on dates where you just have to sit there and stare at each other. I don't love a dinner date. I prefer to go do something together because yeah. mm. you can, you can watch like someone. axe throwing. <laughs> axe throwing is great. You know what? Yeah. Whatever. Like you got a place where you can go throw an axe or or shoot a gun or shoot a bow and arrow. Like go have some fun. But you but you can watch how someone problem solves. You can see how they interact with the people around them. You you can talk while there's an activity and you're not just forced to stare at each other with that pressure. Um yeah, I like an activity date. I love that. I don't like money on dates. Like because no. because I've been working since I graduated high school. 
there's just this innate guilt where I feel like I have to foot the bill for everything mm. and that emasculates some dudes yeah. and other dudes are like, oh, this is awesome. I'm going to do this forever. Um, uh, yeah. So, <laughs> this is also yeah. a problem. <laughs> yeah. There's, an, there's not a win there. Um, I liked going on like, walks. Like, oh, I found a nice nature trail. Let's go get sweaty. To Joy's (laughs) point, no makeup. I'm going to go make myself look real rough uh, and you're going to like it. Yeah. Yeah. When Jeff and I first met, we did a lot of hiking. He saved me from a mountain lion. It was (laughs) thrilling. If if a guy does ask you out, though, he's paying. I'm sorry. I I just... (gasps) He's paying. She said it! She said it! If he asks you out, he's paying. If you ask him out, he probably won't be, he'll probably be a super nice guy and offer to pay anyway. And then, you know, it's nice to let him, but you know, yeah, there's no ifs, ands, or buts about that. I think if he asks you, out, yeah. you I think can, that's polite. A nicely. person who asks another person on a date should pay because they invited. Yeah. Sophia, where are you going on your hot date? Oh man. Um, yeah, I love, I also love to get out and do something but I also, man, I mean, you guys know me. I love food. I love a good meal. <laughs> mm-hmm. But that's only I if I know. I for sure like, you were going to say like a rally. Like, we're going to save the trees. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, my God. If somebody like took me to the Women's March on a date, I'd probably be married already. Um, <laughs> no, like, I don't know. I, I like... I like to not have the pressure of being stuck at a meal. But if something's going really well, I love to get a meal. So that's why it's fun to like... <laughs> maybe go meet to do something like, I don't know. I, I, I went on a great date in New York and to meet like with a coffee and go walk the high line. And then if it's terrible, you're like, this was fun. Bye. Yeah. And if it's great, then you go to dinner. <laughs> you keep you going. Know? Yeah. 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 I like the option of continuing or leaving. It makes me feel like there's not so much pressure. Yeah. Different chapters. Good. Yeah. I just need a parachute that I can pull the string on at any time. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I just got a text from my friend. I got to go, man. Oh, She's stranded no, in Queens. Something bad happened. Oh, I have to go. Yeah, totally. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay. I see one that I like. Uh, Costa Justnia says, which guy had the sweetest off screen? personality. I mean, we had a lot of great boys on our show, but yeah. Tyler Hilton to me had <gasps> such a fun, oh, I just yeah. love him yeah. so much. He's such a great personality. And to be the sweetest man yes. and have to play a total sleaze ball. Yes. Oh, sweet Effortless. baby Tyler. He's, yeah. Tyler is like a great person to do love scenes with or, or like any kind mm-hmm. of romantic scene with because he's so thoughtful and he's so oh. above board and he's so trustworthy. Mm-hmm. And we had to do, when we did this Christmas movie together, he and I had to do this scene where the director was like, okay, you two are going to kiss, but I want you to make the lean into the kiss last as long as humanly possible. Oh, good. Wow. Which is a very strange acting exercise to do with anyone, let alone someone you've been buddies with for yeah. years, yeah. you know? So intimate. Yeah. And he took it so seriously, and w- he's just the loveliest person mm. to act with. Joy, you nailed that one. You win. Ding, ding, ding. Yeah. He's yeah. Great. All right. Mm. Let's see. Gabriella 96 Rose wants to know, what's the best professional advice someone gave you that you think is worth passing on? Mm. Mm. Oh. Best I like professional this. advice. Gosh. Oh, I've got one. Yeah, go. Give it. So I remember when we were gearing up to direct, shadowing directors in Wilmington. And one of the best things that I ever heard on our show, and I've taken it on to every job I've ever worked on, is that the best idea always wins. Yeah. And it doesn't matter if it comes from the director, from an mm-hmm. actor, from a dolly grip, someone on the electric team, the craft service person, the best idea always wins. And it, to me, it's the most concise way to say every single person in this room is of equal value. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And no one in this room can carry their ego as though it means anything. You got to show up and be a team player. And I, I say it to myself all the time. The best idea always wins. That's smart. Yeah. I love that. I I think as an actor, um, some great advice that I got was, um, I don't, I don't know if it's advice as much as, um, just act, acting, uh, uh, teaching, I don't, I don't, acting lessons. Yeah. Acting lesson. But I want to know, but, um, that, and I think we've talked about this before, but acting is like 
90% listening. Yeah. And, and I had never heard it phrased that way before, but once I heard that phrase, uh, everything made so much sense to me. You've got to prepare, mm. so you have to know your lines. So the preparation of just knowing your lines and knowing who your character is, that's all really important, um, majorly important. But the the 80% or 90% or whatever, just being there on set, you have to listen um, to what's being said, listen verbally and non-verbally, or to the mm. verbal and non-verbal communication, rather. Um, because if the writing's good, which hopefully it is, um, your response, your natural response to whatever it is that you're hearing should collate with what's on the page already. Yeah. And yes. so the words should naturally already come out of your mouth. And um, it just made a really big difference for me hearing that. I I um, suddenly felt like it was, uh, I felt much more free to just be in the moment and be and be there as long as I knew I had done my prep and done my work. You're, you've always been a good listener, Joy. I feel mm-hmm. like Thanks. you mastered that. I was... I didn't know that lesson yet. And I was like, oh, her wheels are always turning. How does she do that? (laughs) That's fantastic. I feel like because we started um, doing like, you know, carrying a franchise at such a young age, you know, there's so many people who are in your ear with advice or opinions. And they're like, hey, kid, we're going to do this and we're going to do this. And, you know, this is how you should be doing it. And um, my manager, who is like, you know, family to me. I've been with her since I was 18 years old. I had come to her and I was like, well, so-and-so said, and then he said this, and then he said we should do this. And she just like stopped me. And she's like, do you want his career? And I was like, no. She's like, then why do we care what he says? And I was like, oh, (laughs) oh, you're right. And so I I think that finding people who have paved the way (laughs) or who have conducted themselves with integrity and do, whether they're doing your same exact job or something different, people who have the trajectory that you want, mm-hmm. um, those are the opinions you value. You have to be very careful about what opinions you let in because it affects yeah. your own self-worth. It affects your choices. Um, yeah. Do you want his career? No? Great. I think that he works in life too. You know, you, yeah. you, know, you choose friends and you just pay attention to the friendships that they have. It's the, it's even in its most basic form. If somebody's talking about somebody else to you, they're probably talking about you to <laughs> someone else. Yep. So, you know, I, and I think that just mm-hmm. paying attention to who people are and what they say and, and the kind of people that they surround themselves with, uh, that is a, is a further down the, down the line or down the rabbit hole of, uh, of what you're saying. You know, it's, it's a really good, strategy to live by. Um, Hannah says, Hannah, Hannah, 17, Hannah, ha ha, 17. The music on the show was so iconic and really made the show what it was. Who selected Mm -hmm. the music and how did they find so many great unknown bands and musicians to feature? Lindsay Wolfington. Lindsay Wolfington was a major. I mean, she wasn't on the whole run of the show though, was she? I don't think she was on from the beginning, but, but she, she came on pretty early. Yeah. And she was incredible. I mean, she brought guys like she brought us Kid Cuddy when nobody knew who Kid Cuddy That's was. That's right. Oh man, you know? she was so tapped in. So whether it was, you know, big bands like I mean, all of them, my God, I'm like even Fall Out Boy. <laughs> like Fall Out Boy and Angels and Airwaves that like really served that sort of emo crowd or like Kid Cuddy, or we got, you know, City and Lupe Color, Fiasco. Like, yeah. Lupe. God, we had such amazing, Cheryl Crow, hello. Oh my gosh. We had <laughs> such amazing artists on our show. And, and it was very cool to see, you know, the way that we could help break bands. And yeah. um, it was still in an era where having a sync on a show was so valuable to musicians. And it was pretty special to be a part of that. And, and that's really how, you know, for those of you also curious about this, it's literally an entire department that works on a show. It's a music supervisor yeah. assistants. It's, it's an entire division at a, at a studio that makes film and television. So it is a big undertaking and they did a beautiful job on our show. Um, what is one item you wish you would have taken from the OTH set? Oh, that couch in Karen's cafe, the red one. Yeah, the one under the window. 
There was a couch that was like a red kind of like looped material. Was it in Trick or was it in Karen's Cafe? I don't know. I think that might have been in Trick. There was a red couch that should have been mine. It was like super mod, mid-century. Yeah. The mid-century I mean, mod couch and all the fringe lamps. I took a, I took a whole bunch of stuff at the end. I stole stuff for everybody else. Yeah. Hillary, I stole furniture for you. Like God bless. I, I took drawings for you. I was like, this is ridiculous. And the craziest part was, which I'm not sure if I've ever told any of the fans this, but they sent me a bill. What? At the end. Of, oh yeah. What? You they shut sent up. me a bill at the end for thousands of dollars. You'll <gasps> gag when I tell you how much it was. And I just responded. I said, are you serious? Like, what, do you, what, what are you going to do with this stuff? What do you mean? And they said, well, every single thing is, you know, invoiced and da, 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 da. And I said, Baloney. okay, I'm going to send you a check for 10% of this amount and we'll call it even. <laughs> you sent them anything? Yeah. Uh, guys, I have a guilt complex. I couldn't, Girl, I would they die. they sold our wardrobe Polaroids on eBay. Yeah. Like, I know they did. <laughs> yeah. Dude, they, they sold wardrobe we wore on the show. Yeah. And I don't know if you guys remember, but when they did the, um, Joy, I don't know if we talked about this or not, but when, when, when they did the big, we've wrapped at the end of season nine warehouse sale, I went in there one day with Lisa Goldstein to see what they were selling. Yeah. They were selling every piece of underwear any of us ever wore <gasps> on the show. Stop it. What? Oh, I walked over and grabbed a bin and took all of it. Thank you, Sophia. So you have my underwear? I took all of it. I don't even. Oh my God. Honestly, I, I was like, this is the grossest thing like bras and what what are you talking about this is so inappropriate well this took a dark turn <laughs> i took all of it i was like this is not a thing we're gonna do have none of you ever watched a true crime show no yeah. so i took it That's so they could sell it yay but thank yeah. you and there's Aww. that there's that trait coming back in brooks there it is brooke and sophia's protective instincts I was like, you're not going to sell underwear. We were on the we were on the show to a serial Ugh. killer. It's not happening. No. So I took it. Gross. Or anyone. The spanks we would use for all our skinny uh, dipping scenes. Mm, yeah. Just... Gro- oh my god, those bras with the clear straps. No, uh, girl. I was uh, like, those, we're not remember, doing those it. Those were hot for a second. People loved those well, clear straps. <laughs> all right, we've got one, we've got we've got one minute left for one last question. Was there any last question? What is one thing? that you just do for you and your mental health? That's a nice question. Yeah, let's That's do that. That's a nice positive question. thing to send us off Yeah, on. let's let's end on a positive thing so yeah. it's not about our bosses <laughs> trying to sell our underwear. <laughs> sell our britches. Gross. <laughs> What's one thing that we all do for our mental health, just for us? Hmm, I like that. Mm-hmm. Well? I read books. Mm-hmm. Um, I, it, I know yeah. that I'm not doing well mentally when I can't read. That is my, Mm. I let the light bulbs in my house burn out and I don't read. And so Mm -hmm. I've been forcing myself to just like take a minute. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's important. Prayer for me is a big deal. Just being able to get somewhere quiet and take, even if it's like literally a minute can make a difference for me. Um, Mm -hmm. And I don't do it nearly as often as I want to or think I should, but uh, I always feel better after I pray. Mm-hmm. So I don't know why I don't do it more often. <laughs> I'm just going to text you. I, I don't like, do the Joy. things I want to do. Joy, do take it. a minute right oh, now. God. Yeah. Well, I think it can be really hard to do the things that we know are good for us. Like I, when I'm not communing with what I feel connected to or reading or any of the things that also are most kind of healthy for me, I notice that my shoulders start to do this. They Mm. creep up by my ears. Mm -hmm. And so I've really, it's going to sound so silly, but in the last couple of months, you know, being on set, I have been trying to force myself for one minute to stretch Mm. and think about what's important to me while I do it. So Mm. I guess it's kind of a combination of like relaxing my body and, and a version of prayer. It's like, what? If I'm going to move my body, if I'm going to open my body to something, what is the thing that feels most important to open myself to? Hmm. Can that change my day? Can that take me out of the stress response that keeps me from reading books but keeps me watching the news at 2 in the morning? Like, Mm -hmm. I know that's not good for me. When I can't turn the news off, I'm like, okay, we're in a a stress response. And I'm, I'm trying to make 
that kind of connection be like here in my Mm -hmm. physical body first and then take it to my mind and then take it to what I want my mind to feel connected to. Girl, you need to teach a class. Intentionality makes a major major difference. (laughs) Be like, hot tips from a hot mess teacher. (laughs) (laughs) You guys, this was fun. Keep sending us your questions. I loved this. Me too. Let's do more of these in 2022. Definitely. I'm I'm in, baby. down. Thank you all. All right. We'll see you later. Bye, guys. See ya. Hey, thanks for listening. Don't forget to leave us a review. You can also follow us on Instagram at dramaqueensoth. Or email us at dramaqueens at iheartradio.com. See you next time. We're all about that high school drama girl, drama girl, all about them high school queens. We'll take you for a ride in our comic girl, drama girl, cheering for the right team. Drama queen.